Okay, so now I want to look at O2 minus and O2 2 minus and compare the two molecular orbitals and the bonding order. So O2 minus and O2 2 minus are the ones of interest. Now, what is the number of electrons that I'll be filling these with? So each oxygen has seven. So each oxygen has six. So we've got six um, electrons and we've got two of them. And then we've got that negative there. So that gives us a total of six and six is 12 plus one, 13 electrons. Now, if we do the one with the two minus, we've got six times two plus two electrons now. So that gives me 14 electrons. So now I'm drawing these out, I need to think about what is the way that these orbitals exist. So remember there's a difference when you get into that 2p, so the 2px, 2py, 2bz. So some of them have a lot more of an interaction with the 2s. And there's two different uh, diagrams that, um, or two different ways that those molecular orbitals can be produced based on how big that interaction is. So oxygen is in one of the groups closest to the noble gases. It's in group number 16. And group number 16 actually falls into the category of where they have the small 2s, 2p interaction. So the diagram will look like this. So with this one here, we've got the sigma 2s at the bottom, and then we've got the antibonding. So the bonding, antibonding. Then we've got the 2p sigma bond. We've got the bonding, and the antibonding is all the way up the top now. And then we've got the pi bonding, so the two orbitals that do the pi bonding, and then we've got the antibonding for those ones. So if now I've got 13 electrons that are in that valence shell, so the second energy level, I would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's how that one would look like. If I was to fill up the other one, now I've got 14, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So now my antibonding pi 2p is completely full, whereas before I only had three in there. So let's look at my bond order. So our bond order, I'll abbreviate with BO because I'm running out of space. So first of all, let's do our O2 minus. So we've got half the number of bonding, subtracting our antibonding. So bonding two, four, six, eight. Our antibonding two, four, Five. So these are the ones with the little um, star or asterisk there. So we've got five. Okay, so that would give us the value of 1.5. And if we look at O2, 2 minus, we've got half. We've got two, four, six, eight still. But now we've got two, four, six. So that gives us a value of one. So when we're looking at these, we know that this O2, two minus has a single bond, because remember one is for single bond, and my O2 minus is a bit longer. It's not a single bond, it's not a double bond, it's a little bit longer, it's in between the two. So it's really useful um, theory and understanding the bond length between the diff uh, those two compounds and how they differ. Now, one more question that we have is looking at B2 and having a look at which way it um, makes sense with the data. So we've got the magnetic property information of the B2 and I want to look at the one where they have a, a large interaction between the two pi uh, so the 2p pi and the 2 um, uh, sigma, so the 2p sigma, and have a look at that. 